video up about how we transformed this entrance space from our like super messy playroom into a learning space, but it's gotten really cluttered. <laughs> it has just, it has lost its functionality and we have realized that on this side of the room where we have all of our learning materials along with some uh, toys as well, um, it's just very, very cluttered. Um, and we're using it primarily because it has all the shelving, it has the cubbies, and um, and if you move on over to this space, I think overall see... this space is serving us well. Right. But considering that we have so many learning materials, it's a, you know it, although it is well organized, it's a little bit cluttery, especially for a child. It can be a little bit overwhelming, and we yeah. want to try and simplify it a little bit and make use of the entire room, which we're currently not. Right doing so tell me about this side of the room then. so this side of the room is where we have our memory stand board our letters and our blackboard but we have a lot of wall space that we're not using so what we want to do is we want to create some shelving that not only makes this more functional but more pleasing to the eye um, whenever you organize a space it just it breathes new life into the room so that's what we want to do we want to make it a really pleasant space we want to make it so that kids want to learn and that we want to spend some time in here because as of right now we're like pulling stuff out and then going to get comfy on the living room which is totally okay but this could be a much better space um for us so yeah. that's what we're gonna do yeah we have i mean we have been using this but we you know just kind of pin some artwork which is great because the kids see the stuff they've done they see that it's on the wall i think it gives them pride in what they've done pride, and it, it makes it look important which it is of course but the fact is, this is a long wall. It's nine feet high. It's 13 feet wide. So we can put, you know, three shelves, I would say 11 feet long, and that's gonna be 33 feet of space for books, for, for toys, for picture frames, for, uh, you know, all kinds of things. And we would just wanna really make the best use of this wall, which we're currently not doing. So it's very lopsided. Everything's on this side of the room and we're going to try and keep that a little bit more balanced out which will make it a lot more um, conducive to learning and just to organize, organizing and and yep. better living overall right yep <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be showing you how we go about doing that stay tuned uh -oh. so as you can see back here we're done I can't believe it. It came out so beautiful and Danny did such an incredible job putting together these shelves. And of course that made me like rethink how we were gonna organize this space. And I've been a super busy, busy bee. Um, this next year, what we're gonna be doing and diving into is Ambleside online curriculums. So Charlotte Mason curriculum for my first grader. Um, Kiara and um, it's so many there are so many rich books and um, it's a beautiful curriculum interwoven with really really heavy emphasis in literature and uh, just tales and history and of course we're gonna be doing a lot of enrichments as well and so I want to show you how it is that we're organizing it all and um, and what our homeschool room looks like now uh, so I'm gonna flip this around and show you <laughs>
are the new bookcases that Danny created. He bought several lengths of wood and several widths of wood. So the design aspect here, before we dive into the curriculum and all of the books, is that he went, I believe, 12, 10, 8, and 4, as far as width is con uh, concerned. And then he sanded, sanded them down and, and then he finished them off with a wood stain. So obviously we have so many different tones of wood in here, but um, that's okay with me, honestly. It kind of goes with my, um, my overall aesthetic. I don't go matchy-matchy all the time. You can tell here with, oops, sorry. My choice of frames is always very eclectic and I like keeping it kind of, you know, different. So it matches with that <laughs> in that respect. Um, the, the different, you know, stain on the woods is totally okay with me. So um, it graduates in size, in width and in length. And we knew we didn't want to get rid of this little, um, uh, like, you know, bag holder uh, for the front doorway. Um, and we converted this shoe box into where it is that we're keeping um, the Nighthawks. <laughs> Just that they're on hand, but in their own space. Um, so anyways, the shelving then graduates like that. So really cool aesthetically speaking and what we're going to be doing up in the top we're going to be switching out some of our um, pictures up there is we're going to be doing kind of like uh, our who uh, that's my little guy say hi gabby hi hi <laughs> um, oops you okay you fell okay um, we're going to be doing a family tree. So we're going to be getting photos of my grandparents and um, introducing uh, the great grandparents to my kids. And so we already have the frames out and everything. So for the, not the curriculum, for just our library of books, um, I have been going a little bit crazy on eBay and getting lots of um, old library books for our um at home library and um, just really awesome books here. They're interwoven with what the curriculum is gonna be. We have all the free reads this year, uh, this upcoming year here. Like Peter Pan and Velveteen Rabbit um, are here. Oops, you see that's why a lot of books are not that pretty, but that's part of the charm for me. Um, we're also gonna be reading Charlotte's Web and little house series um and um we already read trumpet of the swan and that is one of our favorites now of course um so anyways so we have all of our nature books pretty much all of our na nature books and sciencey books up on this um side of the library shelving now <laughs> um literature and history um tales you know we have the series of Fable Haven here and um, Harry Potter and only one of Aragon there, but we'll probably get more because they're really awesome books. 
and then um, more history, and then we get into all sorts of living books um, that um, touch upon composers and artists, um, and uh, all our Bible uh, enrichments as well up there. And so, and our blackboard. Oh, and one thing I wanted to know about our blackboard is that it isn't real like chalk paint. So it doesn't have that like velvety finish. Um, so using normal chalk um, is not really the best because it kind of marks it up. I'm not sure if you could tell here. It marks it up in a way that it's really hard to get these out. So we're switching to um, these markers here. Chalk Ola. Um, and I'll have to let you know how it goes. I'm really excited because they're all different kind of colors and metallic on top of it all. So, it's, you know, exciting to write with different colors. So let is let us get into the um, the homeschool room. I'll give you a little tour, and then I uh, go over real quickly the curriculum and how I'm organizing it. So this is gonna be for my little guy, G Gabby, who you just met. Um, excuse all the bags on the other side. We're going on a day trip, so we have all of our bags by the front door. So. Uh, in these cubbies are all the different things that he is going to be able to pull. Uh, right now, these are just what he's playing with in the summer. Um, so over here is, um, it's kind of just like little wooden animal toys. And here's a little balance board. Um, he can either balance it or he can, um, like on this side, um, or he can just put them on flat. And then some pegs, a little cash register that they love to play um, market with or store, and his own globe, which they put this guy in upside down. There you go. Um, and it twists around and stuff. And um, I'm really gonna be incorporating this when we start jumping into geography with Kiara, so she has a globe over here, which is really awesome. We're gonna be jumping into Paddle to the Sea, Paddle of the Sea. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot the name now. Paddle to the Sea, I believe, is the book. And um, we're gonna be uh, mapping out the five great lakes. So she'll be able to follow along with this uh, globe and then also mapping it herself with one of these beautiful maps that we got from Beautiful Feet Books. Um, I got it myself. It's This is not an ad. <laughs> so um, I'll let you know how that goes. But it is nice and big and um, it has two copies. Um, so, you know, hopefully I don't have to use a second copy um, and we can um, have it for Mateo possibly next year or the following year. Um, but that's the map that we're going to be tracing the route the little canoe takes and paddle to the sea um, herself with either color pencils or dry brush Mama. watercolor. We'll see. So, Mama. hi. What's going on? Um. um. Okay, so this is how we're organizing um, Giada's Ambleside Online first grade. She is from... <laughs> Giada graduated from Montessori Kindergarten. Hey, let's be quiet, okay? Okay, thank you. She graduated from Montessori in Kindergarten and um, she was complaining that she didn't have a chance to um, pick and choose what she wanted to work on, which is really one of the foundational things that Montessori um, really allows the kids to do. It, it helps them to become leaders in um, allowing them to structure their day within their uh, blocks of um, working blocks in the morning and in the afternoon. So I figured, you know, why why aren't I doing that? Why am I dictating her day when she is used to being more independent? So my solution to that is I created her um, binder here. And in the binder, 
She's got some markers and a pencil. And this is really where the um, magic happens. Hopefully, I'll let you guys know how it goes. But I created um, a checklist for her. Now, this goes along with what she'll be following weekly. Now, if you'll see, this is her first week. And I went ahead and I um, divided it up into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, of course. And every day already has what it is that she's going to be doing. So, uh, for instance, on Monday, she's going to be tackling the New Catholic Picture Bible um, and this chapter. And then an island story for history. And then she'll be skipping literature and natural history on Monday, but then she'll be reciting poetry and um, and she'll be doing her math as well. So my idea is if she wants to rearrange her day and not follow it to the T, how it is here, that's perfectly fine with me. Now, what she will have to do is make sure that she gets all of these things done and the way that she'll be able to check that off is every day, I'll go ahead and put check marks on her Monday column, which is here. And what she needs to do is say, okay, well, if I want to tackle religion first or history and tales, then let's go over to our magazine file folder. Let's see. Let's say she does want to do history first. She goes to her history magazine file folder. And she'll go ahead and take out an island story, which will be in here. And these are the three books that we're going to be tackling this year, um, one per term. And I went ahead and uh, also printed out the bookmarks that some that a wonderful mother on Ambleside Online's Facebook group uh, posted for us um, to be able to download and print. So I printed it off on cardstock. I haven't laminated them yet. Let's see if I'll have to. I'm hoping that they stay okay <laughs> but in any case this will be like a quick little reference as to like what she's doing in week one she knows that she's got to read this and she'll be able to go over here and then we'll read it together they're very very short um chapters maybe two or three pages each one so as soon as she's done or we're done because i'll be reading along with her um her history or any subject then she'll go ahead come over here get her history check mark and then check it off as done for the day pretty simple and um that way she'll really have a chance to see what it is that she's done throughout the day and see it here getting done one check mark at a time until they're all done every single day um, now, let me see what else can I show you guys. Every single subject, I've done something special. So I'll have to do may maybe some mini videos within each one um, so that you'll be able to see what it is that's kind of special in each one. Um, but if you guys have any questions or comments or something that you'd like me to dive more into as far as how I organize them, uh, please let me know.